Welcome, everybody, to Table Stories Witchcraft and Wizardry. Hello. How's everybody doing today? I uh, hope you're doing well. I hope you're doing well. I hope everybody's ready to be magical. And you have your wands and rule books ready. If you would like to join us on our uh, adventure, then you can head on over to tablestory.tv slash W-A-W, where you can download the system totally for free. You can just uh, head on there. There's some download links for you. Uh, there's character sheets. There's NPC sheets. There's the rule book. Uh, go check it out. And there's links for all of these lovely people. Go follow them on all the places. And if you have yourself a Prime Gaming um, that you'd like to throw their way, a sub, uh, consider doing it. Get yourself some emotes. Go support these lovely people. Because they are. They are. They're fantastic. And they're good role players. And you should go follow them on, on all the things. Um, we've got a lot to do today. So, let's go around the room. Let's do our introductions. And let's get to it. And I'll do a recap for everybody. Luxie, if you'd be so kind it's as to me. start us off. Yeah, hi. Uh, hello, my name is Alexi Games, <laughs> I'm a variety streamer on Twitch. Uh, I, I, you know what I say, I'm a variety streamer, but realistically, I'm just an Animal Crossing addict that also plays like uh, just an absolute crap ton of indie games. So if you're into any of that, there's like an indie game I just saw. It's like a fishing simulator, and then you build a garden. And I was like, yes, give it to me, pixel art. I don't know if you like that stuff. Come on by. Anyways, I play Rosalina Earthcloud here. She keeps mashed potatoes in her pocket, and she talks in as much sensical language as I do. So it, there you go. Bye. Thank you. Everybody go follow Luxie for Animal Crossing content is what I heard. <laughs> yeah, that was great, Luxie. Well done. Yeah. Thank you. I actually, I've been practicing that one over and over again, yeah. so... Yeah. I can tell. <laughs> I censored it. <laughs> Murgles. Hello. Hi, I'm Murgles. Uh, I stream on Twitch Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. If you want to come check me out, twitch.tv slash Murgles. I'm making an animated film, which you can come and see uh, all the steps that I'm doing for that. I'm painting backgrounds and have been for the last however many months. Uh, and we continue forth in that adventure. So thank you so much for having me. I'm playing Clementine Goose Enders for you today. Thank you, Murgles. Nega Oryx. Hi, I'm Nega Oryx. I am playing Olive Everglade, uh, and I'm also a full-time streamer. And this week I am doing a special stream on Thursday. I'm going to be joined by uh, Mint Lotica, who is... Uh, the most amazing women in mechanical keyboards full stop right now just like woman crushing it in the keyboard com uh in the key company and in the keyboard scene so if you're into mechanical keyboards we're going to be building one live on my stream uh the magical girl keycap set is what we're going to be using it's a sailor moon-esque inspired uh set of keycaps and i'm really really excited to have her joining me um, so if you're into mechanical keyboards, I'm a big old nerd for that kind of stuff. And I, I want to make new friends in the keyboard community. So come say hi. That's, that's my little shout out this week. Thank Be you. I'm really excited for today. <laughs> Thank you. Zagonicus. Hi, I'm Zagonicus. Um, I play Alexander Pepin. He's in Ravenclaw. And he's cool, I think. Um... But I'm also cool, and I do streaming and podcasting and role playing and editing and various other things. So find them everywhere on the internet. It's got kiss in all the places. Godcast is my podcast. Thanks. Thank you, buddy. I am Wax Steven, and I will be the headmaster of Doom. I will be dragging the players, kicking and screaming through the adventure today. And last session. I, I think I, I think I did do that quite a bit. Um, if you want to see me uh, basically scream and yell at a child's game, I've also been streaming Animal Crossing on my channel, uh, twitch.tv slash waxsteven as well, uh, sporadically. It's basically whenever I feel like it. Uh, and uh, there's no actual schedule. I don't do this streaming thing for real. What's wrong with you? I'm not a I'm not a real streamer. Um, 
But you can watch that. Uh, watch me yell at Tom Nook. The crook. Um, and uh, otherwise, I think it's time to get started here. Let's get started here. On the last episode of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Alex and Clem were visited by a shadowy figure in the hospital wing while they were recovering. And Alex and Madame Pomfrey managed to scare it away as it crashed through one of the windows. But not before it did some serious psychological damage to everyone involved. As Olive was rushing back to the Gryffindor Tower to get back before curfew, she ran into problems of her own as a shadowy figure that looked like Clem was on the stairs. Olive immobilized them and almost made them fall down and off of the moving staircases, but saved them with a Wingardium Leviosa spell on their clothing. She was hit by a spell from another wizard, however, that she didn't recognize and fought with him and a creature in the darkness. After stunning the wizard, Olive saw them recover, and the creature climbed into a strange briefcase that was altogether too small for it, and he ran off with the imposter Clementine. Nanny Bucklin carried Olive to the hospital wing, and they all met back up to tell each other what had happened. Olive had a touching moment with Headmistress McGonagall, and... Headmistress McGonagall suggested that Olive might have what it takes to be a headmistress of Hogwarts herself someday. Rosie and Alex broke the news to Clem that she snores, and Clem was devastated. Now, today's episode... We're going to fast forward... A few days. Alex, you and Clem have gotten out of the hospital wing. You slept in your own beds. Sunday night. And I'd like to know how everyone has sort of spent that time. Alex and Clem sort of recovering over the weekend. I'd like to know how everybody's feeling and what you may have done over the weekend. I've been um, on the lookout as much as possible. Um, I've been staying up um, not too late, but you know, once I've done homework and stuff, if I'm not hanging out with Swath or whatever, then I will, like, spend the time at my dorm window with my binoculars, just keeping an eye out for things and stuff. Um, because I sort of feel like I didn't really... I had a couple of opportunities and and failed to make the best of them so I'm, I'm sort of trying to make up for that anyone else uh i think you see rosalina um after a long stressful weekend um sort of sat on her bed in her hufflepuff common room and you only barely see rosalina she's uh hidden behind mounds and mounds of food uh, she's been frantically stress cooking, so she's just been taking all of the food back from the kitchen, and she's just piled behind it like people stack books up, uh, except it's leftovers. And she doesn't know what to do, but this was her only outlet, so she's just like, I'll make all the food that I can. Uh, and uh, I don't think that she's really registering the actual stress going on. She's just pushing it aside and like, I can make more cookies and everything will be fine. Clem and Olive? I 
I think Olive has been uh, writing a lot of letters to Maisie. I think that's been uh, a bit of a kind of like combination coping mechanism a little bit. Um, and, you know, trying to keep Maisie up to date with what's going on at Hogwarts, but also just kind of processing what's been going on and, and kind of like working through some of some of her fears in in letter format to Maisie. Okay. Um, Clem has... Uh, I would say that she she's exhausted because now that she knows that she snores at night and that Olive has been listening to her snore the whole time, she now is refusing to sleep or like fall asleep. She's like trying to stay as quiet as possible and like keeps waking up a little bit paranoid that she's been snoring. Um, and so... She's also just been spending her time reading reading the Demon Lord novels. So she has just been obsessively been reading Demon Lord and trying not to sleep. Yeah, Scorpius brought you a copy. Um, thought you might be interested um, mm -hmm. while you were sort of like in the hospital wing recovering and whatnot after hearing about what had happened. Um... Okay, so, we start bright and fresh on Monday. The prefects for all of the houses have been letting everyone know that um, curfew is going to be um, a bit tighter around the school as worries have been expressed by all of the teachers, several students, and the parents. Uh, the parents have been notified, basically, of the things that have been going on uh, around the school, several of which have been extremely worried. Um, there have been many students that have been pulled from classes and have essentially gone home based on this. Word around the school is that parents are petitioning for Hogwarts to be closed down, at least for a short period of time, while this is being worked out. Students are worried. The, um, the parent reaction has been intense, as I'm sure you can imagine. Um, people have been talking about... Um, Nothing has happened like this since um, the uh, the last war that happened with Voldemort. And um, people are very concerned. Um, I think lots of familiar faces around uh, the common rooms um, have sort of gone. Um, there's a, a pretty high percentage of students that have basically been pulled out of school for the time being. Um, I'd like to know as well how you think all of your guardians or parents would have reacted to this. Did Hogwarts like send a letter home like, hey, just in case you want to know it's dangerous, even to the muggle parents? Oh, yeah. Okay, Rosalina's parents are very very concerned. Her dads do not want her to stay, but they, I think Rosalina comes from a very like, they treat Rosalina like an adult. They're like, we don't believe in grades. We don't know what you're doing. Like, we want you to make your own decisions. I understand you're a child. So they're like, we're scared for your safety. But Rosalina's like, I'm uh, my own person, dads, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay regardless of what you think my friends are here. So I think she's fighting really hard to stay, but her dads are like, oh, sweetie, you can't just bake while there's danger going on. Please come home. Okay. I think my grand, um, I think because my dad's here, she's probably okay with letting me stay here for now and 
because he'll make the decision most likely, you know? Like, she doesn't like him, but she, she trusts him to make the right decisions, so. Okay. Can I ask you a question about how the wording in the letter might have been? So, you would have gotten a letter, probably, that said something along the lines of, um, you would have probably come directly from Headmistress McGonagall, and she would have said, Dear parent, addressing them, you know, formally. Dear parent, your parents, your guardians, I feel that it is important to let you know of several occurrences that have been happening on school grounds over the last few weeks. There's been questions and concerns on the safety of the students here, primarily because several magical creatures have gone missing, as well as two teachers coming under harm's way, specifically. They've lost part or most of their memories. There has in fact been an attack on a few students as well. I know this is extremely concerning and I thought it would be extremely important to notify you immediately. I'm sorry for the lax security, but rest assured, prefects will be escorting any students that still remain in school and class to class to ensure their safety. Curfew will be rather strict and teachers will be patrolling the school until this situation is resolved. It is understandable if you wish for your child to be recalled from Hogwarts in the meantime. The Ministry of Magic has been notified as well. There are two auras on campus that are assisting with the events. I hope this letter finds you well, and if there are any updates, you will in fact be notified. Yours sincerely, Headmistress McGonagall. Okay. So, my grand, first of all, has no idea what this letter is saying, really. She, um, she is understanding that there is danger happening. She feels very sad for the teachers who are, are experiencing something very bad. She doesn't really have an understanding of how that affects Clem. She's quite concerned and she is trying to make phone calls to the school board to no avail. Um, and I think at this point she's kind of leaving it in Clem's hands to tell her whether or not she feels scared um, to come home. Uh, but I think she's she's definitely pretty concerned about it. What do you think that the, the letter would look like or what have you? Or would she have called you? Yeah, she probably would have called me if my cell phone still works, like, well enough for out, out calls. Yeah, I mean, you can, like, I, I, I get the impression that you you can, like, check your messages here and there, you know, like, okay. um, okay. But it's probably pretty hard to reach you, like, whenever people want, like, you usually have yeah. to be, like, outside or something. Okay, um, okay, okay. So, yeah, then I definitely would have had a phone call with her, probably, and she would have been asking me what's going on and I would be telling her it's, it's fine 
it's gonna be okay. I'm I'm in good hands here. Don't worry. Everything's okay. And she'd be like asking me for questions to and the answers of which I know will only worry her more because she won't understand it. <laughs> Does that make any sense? It's like she's she doesn't understand Wizarding World, and so me giving these extra details I know will only make it worse. And so I'm I'm trying to sort of like minimize the situation uh and probably the end of that phone call would have included her being like okay well you tell me if you need to you tell me if you're scared okay and like i'll, I'll take you home like you can come home at any time um and just clem being sort of like yeah it's fine don't worry <laughs> you know uh, but i don't think their relationship is strong enough that gran feels she can really impose upon clem and like make clem do stuff um, but she's also, I think, rightfully so, very concerned, especially since, like, Clem's all she has, too. So, yeah. Okay. Just to be super, uh, sure, would the letters arrive, like, would the post arrive to their address? Or would it be more of like a, a magically delivered to the person wherever they are in the world kind of scenario? Oh, good question. Um, I think that it would probably be to the address. Okay. Uh, in that case, Olive's parents don't know. Um, Olive's mom is like often kind of picks up and travels at a moment's notice. And uh, I think currently she's kind of gotten herself into not not trouble but uh you know maybe like run, ran out of money traveling with with her friends that she's traveling with and olive's dad has gone to you know sort things out and bring her home retrieve her from wherever it is that she's she's traveled uh and so i think olive doesn't know I think maybe Olive received a little note from her dad saying that he was going to get her mom, but she doesn't even really know where he is. And definitely they have not been home to check the post. Okay. Um, I see that Twitch is having a few issues. Um, I think we're going to take like a quick break here and just see if they sort themselves out. Uh, just for a few minutes, folks, and uh, we'll come back just in a just in a few minutes. See if Twitch sorts itself out, so we don't have people missing stuff. Um, but we're just going to take a quick break, and then uh, we'll come back. So just give us a few minutes, and we'll be right back. Hopefully, Twitch sorts itself out. Be right back in just a little bit, folks. Welcome back, everybody. Hopefully, we got the uh, Twitch stuff sorted out. Hopefully, it's all sorted out now. Uh, I saw a few, like a few people saying like they were still having issues. Some people saying that it was fixed. So I think we got a little bit of everything going on. Um, <clears throat> so we've kind of heard a little bit as to what the family's responses and whatnot have been. Um, and um, things have been a little concerning. I think we're going to start with everybody basically um, heading to breakfast. Um, so I think we're starting right away with kind of everybody sitting down in the Great Hall. And it's a very different sort of site. You can see maybe half of what you would expect in the Great Hall for breakfast on, a mon on Monday morning. And all of you are kind of sat down after meeting up. Um, so... Hey, um, I baked some stuff. Oh. She drops all of her, her baked goods onto the table in her mini containers. Uh, hi guys, there's, um, a crumble and, and then there's a cake in that one. That's a chocolate pie. Those are chocolate chip cookies, snickerdoodle, uh, rock cakes for Hagrid. Um, I think there's a key lime pie somewhere. Uh, my dad's like Oh my gosh, like can I have a key lime pie? Yeah, yeah, take it, uh, take it. Yeah, anything okay. you want, you can have anything you want. I just take home? it, I just slide no, it towards what? myself and start forking mm. it out. 
Is, any, is anyone going home? No, no, I'm staying. My dads want me to leave. My dads do. They want me to leave. And I said, Dads, I'm an adult uh, and I'll stay here. I can make my yeah. own decisions for myself. Okay. I guess it's kind of good that my grand doesn't really have an understanding of what's happening. Uh, she was really worried too, which yeah. worries me that she was worried, but I can't stand it when she's worried about me, so. My dads don't really understand much about magic, which is both, uh, it's a benefit, but it's also kind of like a negative, because I can be like, I aced my uh, transformation class, and they'll be like, good job making a shoe, and I'm like, that's not really what I did. But also, now they're like, what do you mean there's a demon monster, you know? So it's a, it's a little bit of both. So, uh... Anyways. It's good. Mm hmm What about you, Olive? Are you headed home? No. Um staying. Good. Well Bold Swaff gang continues. We should have a slumber party. Ha. Oh, that's a good idea. I don't think we can do that. No, definitely not. We we totally can't do that. We could all. um, Is there a way you can call each other with your wands? We could have like a FaceTime call with our with our wands, stay up really late, and uh, definitely not hear each other cry to sleep. I don't do that. I I do a lot of yoga, so I'm really well adjusted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do they still not have coffee? So, I really go no, for a cup of coffee. I mean, you remember what happened last time you had coffee? It was lovely. No, well, yeah, it was. Every time we're with you, it's lovely. So in a way that is correct. And in, a, in another way, it's incorrect. Oh. Because, uh, I mean, I for one remember all of thinking she was a roast chicken. So it was a... Yeah, Was it a chicken? Were you a chicken, Olive? Or like a duck? Turkey? chicken so i mean i just don't know if we want to it's a there's a lot going on maybe we don't need to be roast chickens again yeah all right <laughs> yeah <laughs> <clears throat> yeah Al- alex you have something to say barney hey. went home barney went B- home barney went home did was that Barney's choice or his parents? I think it was his parents, but he didn't, you know, I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't think he wanted to go away from you know, his friends and stuff. We should, um, send Bonnie a, a card or I can send him a a pie. I have a pie. Does he have a favorite pie? Um, I think... I have... I wrote his favorite food down somewhere, so I wouldn't forget. Somewhere. Um, I don't remember. I think... Roast duck. I don't think there's a roast duck pie. Uh, actually, it probably is invented one that's a great idea well i have a lot of free stress-filled time on my hands so i'll invent a roast duck pie later thank you but isn't chicken chop isn't chicken pot pie a thing couldn't you just do a roast duck and then make a chicken pot pie with the roast duck and then you have a roast duck pie whoa you would would need to do some (laughs) differences right because i mean duck and chicken don't taste the same yeah yeah yeah. we'll change the seasoning up but the general idea is beautiful thank you so much clem uh, this is great. And Alex, uh, I'll do that later, uh, for sure. Totally fine. Do we have, like, a game plan? I feel aimless. Do you feel aimless? I made, like, 8,000 yeah. cookies. I feel a little aimless. Yeah. Um, is, is Lily here? Uh, Lily actually probably would be here. She's, uh, talking to Albus, uh, probably nearby. Um. Okay. But I don't think they're sat down, like, right next to you. Um, game plan um, you would been, have been notified though uh, Scorpius headed home oh what no no who's he gonna kiss um in these dark times 
I've been doing, um, yeah, I've been keeping watch, um, for figures yeah. behaving strangely from the tower, um, and practicing my spells a little so I don't mess them up next time. Are you sleeping? Yeah, yeah. It just sounds like you've added a lot to your plate, so I'm just making sure everybody's getting some rest. Clem, are you sleeping? Clem, are you Clem? Yes. Obviously. Can't believe you'd ask me that. Hey, yeah. Olive, is Clem sleeping? Not that I'm aware of. When's the last time you slept, Clem? I'm, just I'm saying. sleeping the times when she's sleeping. And in between, I'm just, I'm brushing up on my studies. I'm doing important reading. How are your grades? They're fine. Why are you asking me this? Is this an interrogation? You said you wanted coffee and I noticed you've been pushing your food around on your plate and you're looking a little tired, that's all. That's all, I'm just checking in on it. Listen, somebody's got to check in on us. We're parentless right now. Not that we don't have parents, but we have to be each other's parents when our parents are around. How are you doing? I baked a lot of home goods. Wait. Are you sleeping? Did you not sleep last night? You baked a lot of home home goods, not sleeping? I sleep. I sleep just less than normal. Well, it sounds like we're all in the same boat then. Well, I'm just going to check in on your friends. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry you're sleeping less than normal. It's okay. I'm making up for it with the sugar and and the cookies I'm baking. Like I don't think that makes up for it, but like yeah, energy. I get what you're that saying. creates energy when you eat sugar. It creates energy, and then you can go on forever and ever. Amen. So, you, so I think that's how it works. If do we think science works, here? Because it's been a minute. Why wouldn't everyone do that? Wait, do we not? That's what we do in America. We we eat a lot of sugar and we just keep going and going and going. But I thought that's what coffee's for. But, well, well, there's sugar and coffee. That's well, there's not always sugar and coffee. What? Who would not? My dad drink? used to drink his coffee black, and that's the way I like my coffee too. I thought that meant it's just coffee, but with sugar. No, it's just coffee without any sugar or milk. I'm gonna have to think about that later because the idea of coffee alone, um, maybe it's an acquired taste thing, but that sounds absolutely atrocious, and I'm actually mad that people do that. Isn't that? Isn't coffee just like... It's a bean. Bean So you tea. could squeeze up some kidneys. Yeah. You could it's squeeze up tea, like a kidney bean. Which is why and it doesn't it. make any sense why I can't have any. It's just bean tea. But I would like to submit the fact that I think I died for a little while when we had those coffee... Things. You died and came back to life? That's really cool. What did you see? Alex? I think Rosalina I, I, leans onto the table. She gets in your face. What'd you see when you were, when you died? What was it? I don't know. Everything was buzzy and everything. And then my heartbeat got real fast and I was breathing there a lot. Sausage is there because that's your favorite food. And I think when you die, you're surrounded by the things you love and it has to be at least a little bit of food. I don't, I, I just don't remember everything went dark and then I was in the hospital wing and Nanny Buckland was worried and then things went dark again. And then I don't remember much. The sleep wasn't really a good sleep though maybe he like, just took a nap didn't hey y'all didn't alex pass out when he took the beans i don't think yeah, you died, he alex. died i think i think you passed out well why would my heart go if i wasn't dying i think that's just coffee do my I, people drink it i don't know to feel alive you could just try like Sports. Sports? Sports. Clem, please get some sleep. Maybe I could, maybe you could read her a book. A children's book, a calming children's book, like, like my dad sued to me when I can't sleep. Reading can children's help you fall book. asleep. Have you ever read Just a, a lullaby I, blue? That's a great one. I have a I'm copy. growing up. I'm in double digits now. Okay. And I'm reading a book called Demon Lord. Yeah, it's scary? very good. I mean, no. But then again, 
It's called I don't Demon find most Lord. things scary. Yeah. That sounds like the kind of book that would keep me up at night and I'd have to do an extra meditation session, so... That's why um. it's good. Okay, so you're not sleeping and you're reading horror books? Olive, can you keep an eye on Clem for me? I'm getting kind of nervous. I'm going to sneak some lavender into the next batch of cookies I make you. And it's going to soothe the heck out of you. You know what? Just for that, I'm not going to eat them. Well, Just you won't know. Let me I'll catch crash you when you're burn. not looking. Um, can we circle back around to the fact that we don't have a plan and we're arguing over lavender cookies? Um, I mean, I've been, I've been, I've been doing reconnaissance. Because you're a spy. No, no. I just, it was a joke. It was a joke. Oh, okay. I know we're not spies. Um, yeah. Oh, and rather than putting lavender in the cookies, why don't you just put some sleeping draft in the cookies? No. What? Are you suggesting drugging me? No, 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 no. First no, of all, uh, we don't have drugs here. We have potions. Are you considering potioning me? Yes, no, we, we are. We, uh, the, but Against the my will. Death does have lavender in it, so that makes sense. But just in case you're like, oh, the, I don't want to drink the potion, then you could just eat the cookies. Clement, if you something know, were to happen, friends. wouldn't you want to be well rested? If you were going to have to fight a demon, wouldn't you want to be well rested? Ah, These I don't demons wanna... don't fight. You. Don't you just talk to them about your feelings and stuff? Talk to the demons about our feelings? Is, you, is the demon lord Listen. a therapist? You have a therapist that's a demon? You can get therapists that are demons? I don't know. My therapist was a big ocean creature and it disappeared. Oh. So I'm not doing so hot. Yeah. Am I supposed to high five for therapy? That's what therapy is, right? A good high five? You can high five. Thanks, me. Alex. Yeah. Rosie's okay. hands are extremely sweaty. It's, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Albus and Lily uh, begin to make their way over to you. Uh, Alb they sit on like opposite sides of the table. Um, and they sit down. And Albus just kind of sighs heavily. <sighs> oh, How's Albus. everyone doing? I made a lot of pie. I'm reading a lot of Demon Lord. I'm doing a lot of reconnaissance. You too? Yeah. What, pie? No, I mean, Scorpius must have oh. slipped you a copy yeah, of it. a reader. He oh. did when I was in the hospital wing. Greatest gift I've ever been given. Whoa. I mean that in like an exaggerated, jokey way, you know? Yeah, okay. Well, I'm sure he'll be happy to know that you're liking it. How are you feeling, um, Albus? Oh, terrible. Do you need a we, cookie? We just got a... We just got a howler from Mum. What happened? What'd you do? Well, she isn't happy that we're staying in school for now. Why? But couldn't they just make you come home? Well, that's the thing. Um, <clears throat> Dad sort of asked us first if we wanted to stay. And oh, then no. I don't know if he sort uh -oh. of talked about it with mom properly first and oh, then no. she sent the howler yelling at us for not well not um you should send them a date night package not coming with, like, home, their favorite I cake suppose. it sounds like they're gonna they're probably they're probably i don't think cake will work i think that maybe you could play it like a, a card that plays their favorite song and a delicious dessert, and and they'll kiss in, and it'll be fine. Yeah, and Clem knows a good therapist. Yeah, I it's do. A demon. I do. Well, he's not a demon, not that I know of. Also, maybe we could send your mom a copy of Demon Lord. That's helping me get through a real slump now. Albus rolls his eyes. Right, I'm sure that will work. Um. Anyway, how's everyone feeling? <laughs> I baked a lot of pie. I don't think Clem is sleeping much. 
I think she's just sitting up at night and then saying that she's sleeping. Look I at her. I'm gonna poke her in the head. Who? Look at her. Ow. What? Ow. Stop. She looks tired, Jeez. right? Smell this. Does it smell good? She waves a sprig <clears throat> of lavender in your face. Oh, God. I think it's, it's the passage fast. of time, okay? Not. What? It's what do you mean the it's the passage slow of march. time? It's the slow what? march. I don't. I was never in a band. Why, why are we marching? I, I don't. I, I, I have been a little worried about you sleeping. Yeah, Lily, you're in the same room, right? Yeah. Do you see her sleep at all? Um. She's like looking at you, Clem. Like. I have. You know what? I have a better question. Do you yeah. hear her Did sleep? You have you heard her sleep? I was thinking the same thing, Rosie. Um, no, not really. Yeah, and isn't that better for everybody? Isn't that isn't that the best outcome? No. Huh? Is that why you're not sleeping? Are you self-conscious about the your your oh, your sleepy? Oh, was that my fault? Your, Are it, you not sleeping not... because of me? No, um, okay, I wouldn't call it snoring. I would call it more of a. It's a cre. It's a creative dream noise. No, it's it's sleep uh, purring. Okay, <gasps> listen. I'm going to very <gasps> like kitten. Oh, yeah. it's a little quimmy. That's like cute. a little fluffy kitten, and she's taking a baby snoozle. Exactly. I'm going to very lovingly and gently suggest a boundary right now on this topic. What's a boundary? It's something my therapist talks about that I don't really, I don't really get, but. Okay, I'll make this deal with you. We'll create this boundary if you sleep. Ugh. Fine. I don't even know what it is, but I've already agreed to it. It's also a very wet handshake from Rosalina. Yeah, sleep's important. You can tell us the boundary now. What? The boundary? Just yeah. not talking about how I... Uh, n nighttime purr or... face fart or... I don't know, whatever it is. We, well, we would never say face fart! No, definitely not. <laughs> Not now, especially not now that I know that you call it a face fart. I would never say I it don't ever call again. it that. I'm just saying. Fair enough. You start getting some sleep. We will stop discussing what you do when you're asleep. As long as you're sleeping. Do you think Madame Pomfrey can like hook me up with one of those like little stickers that opens your nostrils I could a suggest bit. a better thing we're in a school filled uh, with magical teachers and maybe they're secure oh who do I trust enough to bring it up Madame Pomfrey probably Madame Pomfrey Only. sees you all the time and she's seen us all at our worst yeah that's I, I've true I've peed my pants three times in this school so, so your, your bass noise has nothing on that <laughs> Your pants, <laughs> or don't, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> so, um, Olive, I mean, like, we didn't really get to talk much about what you saw. Um, can you can you tell us any more? I mean, we've just kind of been hearing a little bit about what Headmistress McGonagall's been saying. Right, yeah, um, it looks like someone's been using Polyjuice Potion to infiltrate Gryffindor Tower. Um, we don't know who it is. I had a bit of a run-in with them, but, um, they got away, so. I haven't been I able to keep an eye on David Calderon boot. Unfortunately, I mean, just, just really, I mean... Thinky boot. If it is David, I don't think he's working alone because I also had a run in with a, a dark figure and I think it was about the same time, right? So it could, so there's, 
And you had two and I had, so it's at least three. There's and so many Americans here. They could all be in on it. But didn't you say they were grown-ups? At least one of them was. I don't know I who took the yeah. polyjuice potion. I suppose it could be anyone. Did you hey, does I the polyjuice wanna... potion change everything about you? Or, like, it makes you look exactly like the person, right? Like their height and everything? Well, yes. It doesn't really change your voice. That's the only Just thing. your oh. appearance, but I didn't hear the fake Clementine say anything, so mm -hmm. I don't think the voice would be m much help. Um, I did have a thought, though. Uh, Rosie. Yeah. Um, remember that fun habit you had uh, that the, the um, ch charming little collection of hair? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of my memorabilia of all my friends so that I know that they always love me and I always have a piece of them with me forever and ever. Yes, that one. Um, perhaps we could check and make sure no one's all hair from your collection. Yeah, for sure. Whack, if I check the vials in my cloak, is all the hair there? No, Clementine's is missing. Hey, uh, so super fun story. Um, there is a vial missing, and I'll let you guess which one. I, um, I it's bet... It's Clementine's. Uh, right, okay. Didn't get to place a bet on that one. <laughs> I, it's my Wait, fault. Wait, so hold on. Wait, no, no, no. I so took hold a on. That means that Aaron, Rosalina is a double. Rosalina, it's okay. But oh, wait, does that bear. mean that someone would need to have been in inside I mean, my cloak? Taken... You oh always wear your cloak. Where do you take your cloak off? Sometimes I. Yeah. Well, I fall asleep with it on. Has anyone? So it have to be someone you... in Hufflepuff, like an American student who's in Hufflepuff. Well, it may have happened out in the halls or in a classroom. I do bump or... into a lot of people, and I hand food out to a lot of people, and I'm not very observant, and I am running all over the place. Rosie? Yes? Do you not own pajamas? You sleep I... in your robes. No, no, I'm wearing my pajamas. Rosie stands up and lifts up her uniform. She has her pajamas on underneath. Yeah, see, look, I wear... They're the best part of your clothes. What, what do the pajamas I ever take look like? We need to know. Oh, they're like a, it's like a striped onesie. It zips up and it's uh, footed. So, but you can't see it because she's got socks and shoes on. So if you pull her, her socks down, you can see that she's completely covered head to toe. And it's got a butt flap, uh, a pair, a onesie pajama. I think it's atrocious colors. I think maybe one of her dads made it for her and she just never takes it off. That must be horrific if you have to use the bathroom. That's what the butt flap is for. Robe plus <laughs> pajamas with butt flaps still. <laughs> I mean, it's complicated to go to the bathroom, but it's worth it because I'm ultimately so comfortable. It's really cold in these dungeon classrooms. I don't know how y'all do it. I feel like I now understand why you've point. peed yourself three times. Well, it's, yeah, it can take a while to take my, my cloak and then uh, my uniform and then my pajama butt flap and then I gotta pull, you know, it's just, a, it's, a, it's a process, but God, the comfort levels, you know, it's worth it. Um, so I don't know what we were talking about. Does that answer your question? Uh, I, I've had something that, uh, just to change topics a little bit, I've had something that's been bothering me a little bit. Um, so I just want to check with all of you, we put our brains together and see if we can figure it out. I saw the two figures over at Hogsmeade. How are they getting into Hogwarts without without um, triggering any sort of perimeter alarm spells or? Are whatever? they not doing that weird dirt digging thing that the Hagrid was doing? Are they not little mole people? Well, there would be perimeter, I think. They should, be, really there should be spells that are that, that that they would run into. I mean, it, well, I suppose if they don't do any magic, can Polly just potion? You're not able to apparate into the school. I know that much. Yeah. yeah. They could just hike in. So they could just they... come over in a boat from Hogsmeade. If they're not seen, maybe. 
Maybe they could transform themselves into pebbles and they roll on into Hogwarts. Why? What do you mean why? Why would they even do it in the first place? Why not become a pebble? All Wait, right. I have Wearing an your idea. pajamas under your uniform. Cold in uh, what here. If, what if... What if they're using Polyjuice Potion to get in? And what if... Olive, when you saw... When you saw the one guy who wasn't looking like me, maybe his Polyjuice Potion wore off? Maybe. Or maybe he's someone who's welcome at Hogwarts and I just didn't recognize him. Yeah. Someone who knows a professor or um, a parent of a student or, you know. I can't believe someone touched my cloak. This is my place of business. Okay, yeah, another question. If they're not David, then what, what, did they, what did they want with Clem's copy of the book? How would they even know. know that I had one? They were watching us, and I am, I'll be honest, I, I performed in some community theater plays, so I don't mind being watched, but this is different. They, yeah, they, you're yeah, right, Rosie, they, they would have been watching us. They would have known that you'd have my hair. They would have known where they could get it from. So they one know of them that has I to sleep be with student. my cloak on, so that's yeah. pretty creepy. That's Why suspicious. Do they, how, why would they have interest in us? Because of what we did last year? Is it because we're so cool and they know that our friendship is tight? Well, if what we did last year, the American students wouldn't really know about that. They weren't here. But what if some of the American students aren't American students? They're spies! We, we, went, we tried this route. Oh. But it doesn't make sense. Yeah, why would I'll they be, be interested in us? Uh, the, the, well, they took the book, so that seems to make sense. No, because why were they, why was the shadow person whispering to me? They knew my name. Ew. They knew that, your name. Ugh, that gives me the They know genies. us. I think maybe we should try talking to Roger again. Okay. Can we do it during he... the daytime? Of course, why not? Guys, I just don't trust the night, that's we all. We probably... Um... Well, that's the thing. We are probably not allowed to wander out and about between yeah, classes. Yeah, really strict now. And, and we have to... We can only... basically move with the rest of the class. With the prefects. That's I mean, a you could great maybe point. Try talk to him during a herbology class. That's what I was gonna say. We have does somebody what is it Monday? Does anybody have herbology yeah. today? You do you, you both do of you do we have it together. Yeah. Okay, um well uh I'm really good at distractions. So when we go to class today, I could um cause a scene. It's my specialty. And then uh somebody could sneak out and talk to Roger. I could ask in Transfiguration about what would be helpful. Tr tr things you can use to travel, maybe? Underground Transfigurations? Transfiguration through objects, maybe, or something? Would that be Transfiguration? I don't know. What do you mean, um, Transfigure through objects? Well, I... I one of the times I saw something moving through when I saw the figures in Hogsmeade um, there was something moving through the ground but it left the ground undisturbed and I, I thought well that's strange maybe it was like an elemental or something but then I was like can you transfigure into an elemental or Maybe I mean, there's some other spell. That would that would be really advanced magic, I, th I think. Like I, 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 we haven't even really heard of that. Yeah, well, they are turning into shadows and whispering to us from it, and taking strange creatures into briefcases and stuff. So it's all pretty advanced, it seems like. Seems like we're really out of our depth, but I don't know why they're interested in us. What Maybe we, we can do? use that to our advantage. 
I'm not, I'm, yeah. I don't want to sound um, conceited, but we're really cool. And uh, we know a lot about the school and all is really good at spells. And uh, maybe they just know that we're the best students here. <laughs> I mean, uh, this is going to sound really harsh, but there are students in every level above us who are no more. Yeah, yeah why not like a sixth year, a seventh year? Or... Yeah. Like they're way better at magic and no way more, you know? Yeah, but are they also going to class on time and not sneaking out and not solving mysteries and not being suspicious? Wouldn't they pick on us because we're the ones sneaking out? So it, w it would make sense if they saw one of us sneaking out. The teacher would be like, there's Swap again, causing trouble. You know what I mean? We're the perfect I'm candidates to sneak in, oh, infiltrate. It could be that they have some interest in the vanished wing and they know us from having dealt with it. Oh, that, you know what, yeah. that, that one makes But aren't they sense. holding classes in the Vanished Wing now? But we went there prior to it being restored. We and got there before the teachers? Maybe if there's still some sort of mystery to be unraveled with it, maybe whoever's behind this knows Wait that. Wait a minute. What? One, two, three, four. No, five. wait a minute. Oh. What? The, the vanished wing? Yeah. Remember I said that the thing over through the ground was moving towards that cave thing over by Hogsmeade? When oh, we went yeah? into the vanished wing and we went into the cage to find Maisie, that looked like it was inside like a cave thing. Oh, what yeah. if that's how they're getting into Hogwarts? The vanished wing? Like a, um... Um, a, a passage of some sort that's tied to the area in Hogsmeade? That passage got somewhere from inside Hogwarts. Why couldn't there be some other sort of... That's a fantastic idea. I'll yeah. be honest, I'm lost, but I'm going to nod my head and, and pretend I know what we're talking about. But we'd need to get into the Vanished Wing to check and... We teachers are all eyes on us. I gave right. Olive one of those those potions where she can run really fast. Um, so I... if... Also have invisibility potions. Yeah, so you're fast what? and invisible? We're set, we're golden. They only last for a few minutes, but a few minutes might be all we need just to investigate and see if there's Okay. I'm gonna throw passage. up some obstacles. If that is how they're getting in, that means they're probably at the other side of the passage. Right. Um, like sleeping there? That's weird. So, so we don't go through it just yet. We just investigate. We just see if it's there at all. And then we let um, the headmistress know. Did and we mention that passage to have... the teachers when we were telling them about what happened? Did we tell them about the inside of the cave thing or? I... When they have found it, like they're smart. They should have looked. We well, when they restored because... the vanished wing, they would have gone in and ha they have access to it. They go in all the time. Okay, but why would they go inside one of the cages? That's, that's a fair point. That would be a weird thing for a teacher to do. Maybe they don't even have the cages still in there. Maybe they don't have any pet dogs. Maybe they move the cages. Storage places? Where I would turn they and have look put at the Albus. cages? <laughs> Albus, you have been in storage places a bunch. Have you seen any cages recently? Oh, <gasps> Alex! What? It's true. I kick Alex under the table. Oh. Well, he is in the dungeons. Yeah. That's not what he meant, Clem. Um, uh, n no. Okay. okay. Where did they... Um, where were they seen? They were seen by the Great Hall. Assuming... Let's think about this logically. Assuming okay. you what? are on the other side of some portal through a cage that yeah. you enter through the cage and you enter Hogwarts at nighttime, you wouldn't have mm -hmm. a lot of time the moment you got in. I mean, they have to use Polyjuice Potion in order to not be seen here. But if we if we have where would they potions, put it? they could have them too. No, no, no. Wait, uh, it might be important to remember, though, just because they're using Polyjuice Potion doesn't mean they're not someone who doesn't it doesn't mean there's someone who doesn't belong at Hogwarts like we know they're right. using the polyjuice potion to get into Gryffindor yeah. Tower not not just to be here 
at all. It could be that they're a student or a professor and they're assisting sneaking in this outside person. A professor? But doesn't it take, that is so it take naughty. a super long time to make Polyjuice Potion, with, which means that this is something that they would have had to have planned and prepared months and months in advance, which means they must have been watching us from well, the very beginning. The, 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 the potion itself has to be started about a month before you add the hair. The hair is the final ingredient. They knew we were coming back from school, or to school. Rosie, how often do you check your mementos? Back when was the last time I noticed there was hair in my pockets? Notice something. Is this with a relationship with anyone or just, no? No. I don't really check. You can't remember, I don't think. I just like, I've had a lot of sugar this year and I feel like my brain's in a fog and I think maybe the stress of everything, I haven't been checking. Is it, I check on the food cause it goes bad, but like, I just assume the hair is always there. You have labeled pockets. Okay, okay, okay. I have a, I have an idea. <clears throat> what if we replace your pocket hair uh-huh. with, um, ones that would really stand out like trap ones so we do like professor mcgonagall or as a mother professor no, we so do when animals they... or animals that works too because if oh. it was professor mcgonagall that could be very that could be very dangerous yeah also how would we get her hair that's a good point like yeah, you so all we have replace some them with... sort of... oh, that's what we do we Wait. replace them with fake ones and you go i'm so glad that i finally got see this but do you want me to back. wander the halls y- 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 yelling loudly about the hair in my pockets? Because that does sound pretty on brand. I could do that. Um, what about you... Bucket? I think we should get one from Bucket, uh, one from Moss. your, your Moss. sweet baby cat. Um, Olive, do you, you have a, I think you have a secret mouse, don't you? I'm just you, secret secret mouse. you think they're going to tell the difference between a human hair and a moss hair, though? I got to be honest. What if we I, I'm just sorry, transfigure I, I just, them to be who? longer? I'm sorry. Before we come up with another plan, who knew about every detail about us and the Vanished Wing? Because it would only be professors. Roger, maybe? But Roger doesn't seem to remember anything. But... Um, um, well, Albus, that means you hear professors about that stuff happening? Things travel around in the school rumors and stuff. Hey, Clem, why don't you yeah. give me a an I read about that, please? Okay. I'm scared all of a sudden. Um, this is in regards to Roger. Um, and, uh, you can ask me one question. I'm trying to leave this ambiguous because I don't want to solve it for you. Well, first of all, I'm very scared that there's something that I have to solve because I'm suddenly feeling very dim. Um, can I ask you a question in terms of like, I don't know what this, I don't know what question to ask because I don't know what information I'm supposed to be going for. Mm-hmm. I'm tr- it's um, like I'm trying to give you a eureka moment without giving you the re- eureka part. Okay, 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 <laughs> okay. Trying. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, I'm sweating. <laughs> it's like, oh no. <laughs> you've got you've got this. All the pressure's on you. We're not going to help. You. I know. <laughs> I mean, okay. I'm just going to say You can ask me. Which is it? Yeah, you can two? Two, you get two questions. I get two? Mhm. Oh, thank goodness. I was like, there's only one. What does it do? Uh, 
Is it possible that the Glowakus could take away a ghost's memories? You see, I'm going to tell you right now. I was already thinking about it. Um, okay. Should I ask a second question? You can. Who do I know that's related to it? <sighs> I'm trying to think of the best way to answer that. I can pick a different one if you No, 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 no. <laughs> if he's thinking a lot, it means it's a pretty good question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I hate outright just like turning you guys down when you come up with a question. But I have to phrase it correctly. Yeah, of course. <clears throat> so... It's the Glowakus in particular has been related to uh, Hagrid. It's been related to Madame Pomfrey. In your estimation, and the group has sort of been thinking that this is the sorry, Madame Pince or, or Madame Pince, Pomfrey? Madame Pince. Sorry. Okay, okay. Um, uh, the group has been estimating that it's the Glowakus that has caused the memory loss. Um, and it's been potentially related to the uh, person that Olive ran into. Yes. I don't know if you know if for certain if it is related to Roger, but... It does kind of line up. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay, thank you. Guys? Yeah, yeah. hey, what's up? What? You know how... Well... Do you think the Cloacus could also take the memory of a ghost? Why not? Hmm. Ghosts have memories. Ghosts can be affected by dark creatures and magical creatures. Remember, the shade managed it. We should go talk to Roger. I have another thing that I thought about. Um, is there like a FBI's most wanted, except it's like the Aurors most wanted of Dark Wizards and stuff. Maybe they've got like pictures and oh and yeah, they Olive do. Saw the, yeah, definitely. Olive can, Olive can look at the faces and see if she recognizes one, and then oh, that's a really cool idea, Alex. Yeah, and then we narrow it, and that might like help milk the Aurors. Box, but for criminals, is yeah. there is there like a book or a, a way to catalog all of that? Um. Well, there's like, um, uh, I mean, usually it would just come out in the paper. Um, they, Where do we they get have paper? it, yeah, they have it in, in, in the paper. Um, I wonder if anyone has one. Does the library keep records of, of the newspaper? They do. Okay. We should go yeah, to the library. We, uh, this was such a productive morning. We have a number of leads now. So, okay, so okay we need to make a decision though if we're gonna go and okay so we can search maybe a story what if we talk to one of the seventh years six or seventh years who's taken dark creatures and ask them what the class looks like just because we're curious and see if they mention the cages because then we'll uh, know if they're in there or not and that'll save us going in yeah okay 
I can do, do you that. Do know anyone in 6th or 7th year? Um... I mean, Is James? Aside, aside from the prefects. Do we know anyone who is in that class? I mean, I probably... Yeah. I, I think that Clem might... I don't know if Clem would know or have paid attention to who's taking the class since she's been so obsessed about taking the class herself. Can uh, I write about that? Okay. James is a fifth year, by the way. Fifth year? Yeah. You can ask three, right? three questions from the I read about that list. Specifically about the Dark Creatures class. Who do I know that's related to it? So, the head student in Gryffindor takes that class. Olive spoke to him recently as well. Yeah, and it Amazing. went great. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. Um, uh, I mean, I guess I can ask two other questions. If you want. Just, you for, fu- just for funsies. Um, actually, no. I don't think I'm going to, because I think that was all I really wanted to know. Um... Yeah. Uh, the, I think the head Gryffindor student, I I think he, he takes, uh, dark creatures. I, I try to keep a tabs on people who are taking it, because, you know, I really want to. Um, Silas Bortusk? Yeah. Silas Bortusk. That guy. Okay. Is it, do, do either of you, have you either of you spoken with him? I haven't Brief. really spoken with him. Um, briefly, yes. But you, he, you can you can ask him, right? He's not what I would call a fan of mine. Well, what about this? Wait, I that am because very. Of the... Oh, sorry. Oh Go no, ahead. it's okay. Go ahead. It, it, was that because of the rummaging incident? He was the one I reported it to. Oh, I think that. Oh, I'm actually... sorry. James is a sixth year. He is a sixth year. James is sixth year. Yeah. Okay. You can assume though yeah. that Albus didn't speak up about James because James probably isn't taking that. Yeah, I, I think that works in our ad- to our advantage actually. Olive, see, but... we do a little bit of deceiving, just a little touch, well, a little wait. white lie. You can tell him that. Your friend, uh, Clem, who you rummaged through the stuff, sorry, but you're trying to make it up to her, and you know she's obsessed with that class and really wants to do it, so you just wanted to know what it looks like so you can draw a picture for her or something to, to you know, try and mend the bridge that you rummaged, uh, burned, th- damaged. Al- Alex, then... I think that's it. Very smart idea. Or I could just go and talk to him myself and just say, I'm super into this class. Can I ask you some questions? I just figured because all of us have a pre-existing relationship and maybe he'll you know, take nicely to the fact that she's making an effort to make things right, you know? I just... Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, okay. I get... Uh, sorry. I didn't get... Uh, if 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 we're trying to sort of ingra- ingra- it's ingra- part of the manipulation I see yeah okay okay uh, it, it, her standing with him is better off afterwards because then she's yeah you, I mean two all, all of it's up to you I can try um y- yeah I can try you don't have to. Clem could just. Clem is obsessed with it and she gets kind of. About yeah. It and it's kind of convincing, so she can do it. I just thought that maybe. You know, he might take pity on you if you do the sad face. Yeah, that one. And, um. Yeah, that might help. Olive, what's, what's wrong? Y- you do have the sad face. I just don't oh, think I he likes practicing. me. Much. I mean, that's the whole well, he point. doesn't know you. He can't like you or not like you because he doesn't know you. 
That's an excellent and accurate point. Anybody who knows you would like you. Yeah. It's just a fact. I'll Scientific. It, I'll give it my best shot. Um, in the meantime, do we want to try to um, get a copy of the paper so I can see if I can identify um, any of the... I'm, you know. I'm, I'm going to be near the library uh, for my f first period. Maybe we can talk about it at lunch. Yeah, good right. plan. Yeah. Uh, Olive, if you, if, if you uh, give Albus a quick description, maybe... I honestly didn't get a good enough look to give a description. I just would have to look at him and see if anything sparks something. That's fine. It was really dark and really quick. You were too busy kicking his butt. <laughs> right. I mean, you, 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 you basically fought off an adult. I tried. He still made it away, though, so I don't know how successful I was. Well, he didn't kill you, so I'd say you were pretty successful. You, you fought off an adult. You fought off a, a Clemenot, and and you fought off a. a Something. You, you won a 1v3. You beat three, one magical beast, one adult, and one unknown disguised person. And you saw through the disguise. I mean, that's kind of... Yeah, you're lucky, though, that it wasn't actually me, or else you would have been in real trouble. <laughs> I think I can spot the real Clementine from a mile away. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I'm going to take it in stride. I'm going to just lean into good thing. <laughs> All, right, All right, so... Uh, um, we convene at lunch. You I'll talk with Roger during herbology. herbology. Um, I'll... Transfiguration. I don't think I can do anything particularly useful, but... Oh, would Transfiguration cover... Uh, I don't know, I'll just ask about transportation. And if that's included in transfiguration, because it's like transfiguring space. Oh. When you think about it. Maybe. I'm like way um, more interested in transfiguration now. Maybe a good question to ask might be how we can determine if something has been transfigured in the first place. Like, we might not be able to pinpoint how they could be using it to their advantage, but... It, maybe if we knew a spell to reveal a transfiguration uh, detection true form, spell, yeah, yeah, then we don't need to know how they're using it. It could just be helpful if it comes up in any instance. Yeah, it's just a general query. That's a great. That's that. Well, I'll do that then. All right. All right. We'll meet. We'll meet back, back together at lunch. At lunch. It's about first period anyway, so. Hey. Right. Well. Good luck, everyone. So productive yeah. this morning. It's so good. Just, uh, oh, there's no barn either. Oh, are you okay, Rosie? Oh, yeah, no, I, I just, you know when you, like, absorb a lot of knowledge and your brain gets tired? Yeah. Yeah, that's how I feel. And also, like, Not maybe I didn't five. retain anything, but I think I'm going to be fine. <laughs> high five? It's like you don't seem like you need it. No, 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 I could take a high five. If you can get three, do them rapid fire. Okay, yeah. ready? Okay. Yeah. Three. Two, one, go. One. I, I hit, I, okay. that was five. I'm sorry, I can't I, count. It's all I right. And I was I too think, excited. I think you spread them evenly anyway. It's okay, okay, good. Good job. Thanks. Yeah, I feel better. I'm good now. Yeah, we can go. Uh, team. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I head to where the Ravenclaws are gathering to leave. Sure. David Calderon Boot is there. <laughs> Hi, David. Oh. Hello. Hi. I was I was just wondering if um a lot of people were heading home. I was wondering what was happening with you guys. Is everything okay? Well, there's some concern, as I'm sure you're aware, but. Uh, my father specifically told me that 
I'm old enough to make the decision myself. Did you want to stay? I'm more intrigued than anything. Me too. I, 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 isn't it like a puzzle? And there's few things as frustrating as a puzzle that's not solved, right? I suppose. I kind of want to solve the puzzle. He, uh, he looks over towards the, uh, group, I guess, if everyone has kind of dispersed, uh, sort of meeting up with the prefects and whatnot. He probably looks over towards Olive, and he says, How's your friend doing? Oh, my friends are all great. How's your friends doing? Um, I don't know. Most of them are back in America. You haven't made many other friends here? Or are probably really busy? Because you're trying extra hard, right? Um, well, uh, if I'm honest, it's been a little difficult to get acclimated. Here. I find I think everyone's like that in their first year because you're technically like your first year at Hogwarts and it's a little bit tricky for lots of people because this is probably as different for you as it was for like maybe not Muggleborns because you know magic but you know what I mean it's really different it is and strange things are happening. Very strange. Is this a common thing here? Um, I don't know. Maybe. Not enough data. Let's put it that way. If you ask me when I'm leaving, uh, send me an owl and I'll let you know. Then five years. Speaking of which, mm -hmm. why owls? Um, I'm not sure. But there, wait, wait a minute. I reach into my pocket and like pull it half a sausage. See if Benny comes. Benny! Yeah, Benny comes swooping in. Oh, I hold up my other arm from. Oh, sorry. Um, I, I hold the sausage up for, for Benny to start munching on. Uh, this is Benny Mayo, and give him belly scratches. Um, it's Benny. The way that he ate that sausage. Uh, I'm gonna say no. No, it's fine. I've got more, and and. Honest, I, if I had three arms, I'd show you, but that's a bad idea. I read about it. All right. He, he, he loves scratches. Uh, I don't think so. Sorry. We, um, the, we, uh, I just bring my face closer to Benny, and I just kind of like cheek rub against his belly. Like the belly feathers are so soft. Benny is just, just interested in eating the food. Yeah. See, only Benny's um. He really likes food, so basically if he's eating, you can give him all the scratches you want. And if he's full, you can give him all the scratches. Try and convince him. One. Okay. Take it uh, plus one, because Benny is adorable. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm not good at convincing people. Oh, he did it. Ish. Choose one from the list. <laughs> um... <laughs> Well, I think I gave them proof, so they need proof, maybe. And I just can rub my cheek against Benny more. He looks like, extremely oh, hesitant, but reaches out and like scratches. You see how fluffy and warm his feathers are. 
very warm and fluffy. Yeah, see, that's like a real advantage because you get your letters delivered and then you've got... got feathers. Yeah, it happens. I'll deal with it. But, you know, so you get a friend, a fluffy, warm, feathery friend, and a mail delivery system and one, and also um, they deal with any mice around the property and stuff like that. We use weasels. Weasels? Oh, I bet they're soft and furry as well. Over sure, long distances, so we use pigeons. Right. See, that's why owls, because as much as owls like Benny look really adorable and they're fluffy and nice, they're actually very efficient predators. I suppose that makes sense. Anyway, uh, I've got to get to class. Right. Well, f- um, I'm going to continue trying to solve the puzzle. So if you find any pieces, then let me know. Oh, and if you see Benny and you have any food and you want more to give him more scratches, just, you know, he'll let you give him scratches. I, mean, I, I take a bit of food and, and toss it in the air and throw my arm up and Benny swoops up and gets it and flutters off. All right, well. David uh, sort of nods his head and says uh, goodbye. Yeah, goodbye. He walks away. I watch him as he walks away. Mm. He sort of lines up with the other students getting ready to go to class. And that's a good place for us to take our break. I have honestly never felt smarter than in like the last... I was like, Clem is just... <laughs> <laughs> So, we've had some, <laughs> we've had some uh, new questions introduced into the uh, story here. Some things to think about. Um, I'm curious to see where the minds in chat will meander uh, over some of these things. I'm curious indeed. Hopefully, we'll see some of the um, some of the thoughts in the Discord. Um, but otherwise, we're going to take a little bit of a break here, folks. If you haven't done so, please make sure you follow all of these wonderful people. Um, and uh, if you have yourself a Prime Gaming that you haven't used yet, consider throwing it their way. Get yourself some emotes, support them. They're uh, fantastic. Please give them a follow, etc. Um, we're going to take a little bit of a break, and we'll be back in just a little bit. Hang tight for more Witchcraft and Wizardry. Welcome everybody to Table Stories Witchcraft and Wizardry. We return... As the group has split up and headed to class. Um, <clears throat> now, the first class of the day for the Gryffindors is potions. First class of the day for the Hufflepuffs is charms. And the first class of the day for the Ravenclaws is transfiguration. I think we... Uh, we had a few questions and things that some of the um, some of the group wanted to try and address while they were in class. I know Alex did. Um, is anybody trying to specifically do anything out of the ordinary in class, or ask any questions of any kind? Um, I'm kind of curious what potion we're working on today in class. Okay. Let's take a look. If my Google Doc will open, that will be helpful. Okay. Uh, today, you are doing some research on the swelling solution. Swelling <laughs> solution causes enlargement on contact. Is that something that we would be able to, like, if we're if we're practicing making it in class, 
I can like pocket a vial of it to keep. Uh, or attempt to, I guess. You can always try to do things. Okay. <laughs> I sure would like to then. Okay. All right. So, uh, I think you're going to try and be quick and quiet. Can I try a different uh, approach to it instead of attempting to sneak it? Sure, what you got? I think I'd like to tell the professor um, that, you know, Olive's, Olive's been writing home to her parents about her favorite classes, and potions is her favorite class. And uh, I think she's going to say to the professor, um, Professor, um, I know it's not exactly what we would normally do in class, but um, would it be at, at all possible to save a sample of today's potion just so I can send it home to my dad and show him how far I've come in lessons this year? I think he'd be really proud of me. You can try and convince Professor Griffiths uh, to, to allow this. Can I use my relationship with potions class? Yeah, definitely. Okay, cool. This is your favorite class. A 10. Uh, the professor's been, I think, uncharacteristically uh, quiet um, today. Professor Griffiths is usually pretty open-minded, um, but also a bit strange. Like, he's fairly cautious, um, but he's been, like, secretive in the past, and he's kind of, like, mumbling a little bit, and you bring up the topic, and he said he looks at you for a moment, almost like he didn't hear what you said, and he catches, like, the end of it, I think, and he says... Oh, uh, yes, that's fine. Uh, of course. Uh, anyway, um, um, yeah, I could do that, I suppose. Um, where, where, where was I? And the class sort of looks around. Someone raises their hand and says, I think you were talking about some of the side effects of the swelling potion, sir? Oh, uh, of course, of course. Uh, so, the swelling potion. Uh, side effects um, potentially could include some soreness in the muscles, and uh, you will notice uh, that you will be a bit flabby after the effects wear off uh, for approximately one hour. It starts to ramble off. As Olive just, like, the potion away. We head on Thank over you. into the Transfigurations class where Alex um, is getting a Transfiguration lesson from uh, Professor uh, excuse me, Professor Barrows um, who has been reprimanding uh, another Ravenclaw student uh, in regards to the poor attempt at transfiguring, uh, as transfiguring, um, something into a badger. Oh. Um, Professor... Professor what Barrett, is it, Mr. Pippin? So, if someone did... A, 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 a did a particularly good job at turning something into a badger. Is there perhaps a spell that one could cast to detect something that's been transfigured versus something that's a natural version of the object? She looks at you with a raised eyebrow. Roll a convince for me, please. Well... I somehow succeeded at one of these earlier, so... <laughs> Seven. Choose one from the list, please. Um, 
I, I think they go along with it for now. It's the best. She raises an eyebrow and starts to walk over to you. And she says, A very curious question, Mr. Pippin. I have more curious questions. I'm full of them, basically. A curious mind can be a good thing. But yes, to answer your question, there is a way to see if someone or something has been transfigured. Is that something that that um, that a uh, second year would have the capabilities of, um, maybe not mastering but attempting? Um, because because I was I was just curious. I was maybe thinking I could play like a game or something, transfigure a thing, and then have another thing of it, and then see if people could figure out which was the transfigured one. And it's transfiguration practice as well, you know? It's like a fun way to practice transfiguration. It's like a contest. Maybe you could run the contest. And we could do house points and all sorts of things. Why do you ask, Mr. Pippin? I'm not really sure. I just kind of got thinking about it. And... Why, why, did, why did I ask? I knew it was in my brain for a reason. There was... I was thinking about transfiguring space. That's another question we can cover another time. And then there was... How can you detect the thing that's transfigured? Because... Was it a book? Was it a... I can't remember. Unfortunately, Mr. Pippin, it's a bit beyond your capabilities now. But yes, there are spells to help you discover those that have been transfigured there are such things as detection wards, charms that can be used. Uh, there are magical items. There are ways to end spells on anyone that is transfigured. And if you know that they have, in fact, been transfigured, you can turn them back, forcibly. Hmm. Oh, that seems handy. But as I said, a very dangerous thing for a second year to be attempting. I've read the Magical Mishaps Terrible Transfigurations book. I'm not going to be doing anything. Um, I understand that it's dangerous. Thank you. Uh, do, 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 is it possible to transfigure space? To, like, transport? To create... Transfigured to make space smaller and bend it, like so you can travel between one place that is and another. Charms but... class, Mr. Well, Pippin. Not transfiguration. Sorry, I just got caught up in the idea of of bending space with transfiguration magic. It's probably not a good idea. Okay, well, thank you, Professor. Um, thank you. She's still sort of looking at you before she returns to her previous thought. I don't want you to be causing any trouble, Mr. Pippin. Yeah. Um, uh, if we have an object to turn into a badger, I'd like to do that as like a Try and get the attention off of me so she can get some approval. Like, I can't. She I, looks I, at I, you and then looks mm. at the, uh, the sort of like horrifically like half transfigured badger, uh, like a half book that's kind of running around like in a weird, uh, ellipse through like the legs of a desk. And she mm. sort of points to it and she says, 
River Tay. And you see the uh, wand send out a spell, and the um, the badger quickly turns back into a book. Oh. A very advanced spell. I can tell. Your your rest action was so... Mr. Pippin, be silent. Yeah. The lesson shall continue. Of course, Professor. Thank you. <clears throat> and she, um, she starts to ramble on about this, um, how this uh, other Ravenclaw student, who I think was probably Peter Appletree, uh, failed to cast the spell correctly. Um, and I believe it is a first-year spell, so he's getting an extra uh, stern talking to while this is going on. And um, we sort of fade out of transfigurations. Was anybody else trying to figure anything out while in class? Could Rosalina know what they are teaching in charms today? Oh, sure. Charms class today. Absolutely. Let's take a look. So, charms today. would be about the, uh, where is it? Where did it go? Um, I think it's actually been a little bit about some defensive magic. Um, specifically, uh, the Eresto Momentum spell, which decreases the velocity of a moving target. Uh, would we learn how to do that? Oh, yeah. I mean, the class would be p- people sort of, um, you know, doing their the practice and whatnot. Um, probably people throwing, like, uh, I think, quaffles um, mm-hmm. at, at each other and trying to slow them down before they smack students in the head. So it's a it's like a second year charm, so spell, mm-hmm. if we were to use it. Yep. Uh, I think... Rosalina, while everybody's like doing the quaffle and practicing, uh, raises her hand uh, and then before she can be called on, goes, um, um, uh, um, uh, if you were to use this spell against a ghost, would it work? Does it have to be a human? The charms professor, which is also the uh, vice headmaster, Phileas Flitwick says, a ghost? Uh, what do you mean a ghost? Uh, professor, you know, uh, we live in a magical world, and I was just wondering if if a magical creature or a ghost or anything perhaps less solid than a human was to come at you, if uh, a resto momentum would uh, slow them down. <laughs> Don't be silly, uh, ghost. You can't be... Uh, you can't cast a spell on a ghost. Well, not directly, anyway. See, Professor, uh, I think there's a few spells you can cast on a, on a ghost. You could petrify a ghost, I'm almost positive. No, that's, no, that's, that's impossible. Did, did Olive not petrificus totalis a ghost in the first season? Olive did, yes. Is that not supposed to happen? Oh, okay, um, good to know. Um, okay, so, um, so spells shouldn't work on ghosts. Of course not. But, uh, what about, Otherwise, um, students would have obliterated peeves many, many years ago. That's an excellent point, Professor. You're so knowledgeable. Although peeves is a bit different than a ghost. Oh, uh, what, uh, what about, uh, what about magical creatures? Perhaps magical creatures 
that are big. Well, I suppose it depends on the magical creature, but I, I suppose so. Okay, would it would it be harder for me to cast that on a magical creature than it would be on a quaffle professor? Again, it, it depends on the, the magical creature. Okay, uh, that's good to know. Uh, thank you, thank you, professor. You're welcome, uh, Miss uh, Earth Cloud. Always, now, a, if you could always a pleasure. Please take your stance. Uh, uh, your your fellow student uh, uh, will be uh, now throwing the, the quaffle at you. Uh, go ahead, uh, Miss uh, McFerris. Am I casting a re <laughs> resto momentum? Oh, yeah. Yeah, good. Oh, I'm so good at magic. You uh, can see Catherine, like, sort of getting the quaffle ready. I was the kid that was bullied and got hit with the balls in gym class in real life, so this is terribly terrifying for me as a person. Uh, um, okay, I, I got was this, too, for sure. I was too, but I got really good at dodgeball. Oh, that's great. My glasses got broken with a basketball, so, um, <clears throat> uh, I got this. Um, uh, we got this. What is it, Catherine? We got it, Catherine. Uh, arrest of momentum. Quaffle sails. Smacks Rosie in the face. It falls backwards. Oh, oh, good. Yeah, no, I expected that one, so it didn't hurt as bad. I expected it. I, I believe your wand was backwards, Miss uh, Earth Cloud. You've, uh, oh. you've taken a condition uh, as the spell has rebounded. All right. I am uh, dazed. Okay. Uh, but... Uh, as I sit there dazed, um, I would like to whip out a cookie and use my automatic succeed treat wounds on myself. Yeah, it and... doesn't work on yourself. What? No. What? It says automatically succeed on a treat wounds. Yeah, but look at the actual spell. When you take some time to treat someone's wounds, it's not your wounds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. Wait, where did I did I get hit in the head or did I rebound it into my chest, Whack? Uh I I'll leave that up to you. I think that I think Rosalina has physically hurt herself. I just thought in my brain that the only physical hurt one was days, but it's actually injured, which is mm. body, correct? Yeah. Okay. I think I think Rosalina's got uh there's a an X shaped bandage. Like uh I want to say on her on her butt cheek, but it's probably like on her knee or something. She just skid back, hit herself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the PG version. All right, thanks for that enchanting class, whack <laughs> Professor Flitwick. <laughs> You're welcome. Any other questions or things from class? Okay. So, the first two periods of Monday go by quickly, and the students are uh, shepherded back to the Great Hall, where they meet back up. Hey! Uh, we did want to quickly speak to Roger. Oh, uh, herbology. That's right. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, no, that's okay. Okay. So Please herbology. Please let us go do the herbs. So the Gryffindors <laughs> and the Hufflepuffs. How are you doing this? I mean, you, you've got herbology class. Um, mm -hmm. Roger's outside by the greenhouses. Let me roll to see if you go outside today. Uh, most of the class is spent inside the classroom. However, near the end of the class, you do go outside as, uh, Professor Longbottom, um, gets some clippings from one of the plants there, um, to hand out to each of you to, uh, practice, um, uh, basically, uh, basically preparing a special uh, potion ingredient. 
uh, similar to the way that you had to work with the Snapdragon and take care of it, this is another sort of special ingredient, the leaves of this uh, specific plant, um, uh, which is known as the... Um, <laughs> Poisonous Moonflower. Oh. If the leaves are not treated correctly, uh, if used in a potion, they can lead to uh, some very nasty uh, stomach pains. Okay. So, everybody's sort of like lined up uh, waiting to get the clippings of these plants, uh, from Professor Longbottom. Um, he's, uh, he's basically got some, like, small shears, um, and he's giving them to each student as they come up. There's only, uh, like, two of these plants. They're kind of, like, rare, Professor Longbottom has told you, and, um, you're sort of, like, lined up, and each student is sort of required to, uh, take their own, um, uh, clippings. So, how are you going to sneak out to talk to Roger? I think Rosie creates a distraction so that the other two can sneak out. How do you um, do this? I think that, well, it's because there's a big lineup. I think that when it comes to be Rosie's turn, um, Rosie, um, instead of clipping it with a pair of scissors, leans down and bites the, f the petal off with her mouth. <laughs> like this? Professor Longbottom, I think, would not even assume that anyone would do such a thing. Um, how did this conversation go? What did you say before this happened? Well, we talked about it at breakfast, so I said that I was going to make a distraction, and when they saw my distraction, that they would sneak out and go talk to Roger. So I think that they were waiting the perfect opportunity. They wait for me to, like, cause a lot of trouble, and then and then they, they, they bounce. So I purposefully get ahead of them in line, and I give them, like, a... I look back and give them a... And then, and then as it comes to be... I, that was a wink for podcast listeners. I guess it comes to be my turn... I, uh, I'm like, okay, I got it. So we go just like this. And then she puts the, the scissors down and she chomps it with her mouth. And then she looks dead in Professor Longbottom's eyes and starts to furiously chew. He's looking at, what are you? Are we trying no, it? No, no, it's no, a no. sample. No, 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 no. What are you it's doing? It's a sample. It's a sample. Like at the food market? No, no. Uh, 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 Rosie uh, swallows. Uh, Mr. Scott, no! Oh, uh, um. Well, it was delicious, <laughs> Professor. Congratulations, you've grown a very. Uh, Rosie looks back to see if there's, <laughs> if they snuck out or if they're attempting to. What did I, you I do? Honestly, <laughs> I'm standing here in horror. Like, unless Olive pulled on me, I'm literally like. I think for like a split second, like when Rosie starts moving it toward her mouth, Olive's face is just like, <laughs> like she's just struck. No. But it's, yeah, like the slow-mo, like the realization that she's actually gonna do it. But as soon as she realizes what's happening, she's gonna tug at Clem's robe to be like, Gotta get out fast. Otherwise, okay. we're gonna stare at this forever. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I, I'm okay, so what I'd back. like then is I need two different roles. I need a show courage roll from Olive, and I need a resist influence roll from Clem. Oh boy. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna use my house benefit to automatically succeed on show courage. Okay. Well, I don't have a house benefit for this right now, so. Oh! Wow. Nice. All right. So, yeah, um, <clears throat> you uh, you sort of resist the desire to stare gawking at this horrific situation, Clem. Olive, uh, you pull uh, Clem away, and Clem actually, you know, gets it together. All right, we're uh, looking looking for Roger then. Okay. Mm -hmm. The rest of the class is just. <laughs> How am I 
Like, what happens to me? Nothing yet. <laughs> <laughs> no. Terrifying. Professor Longbottom's like, oh, we, uh, you need to, you need to throw up. You need to throw up. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, oh no, but it was so delicious. I no, want to keep it down. No, it's not going to be delicious. I'm really strong. Mm. And he's like, oh no. Uh, and he's, he's taking, he's still like takes out his wand. Um, <laughs> oh, <no>. <laughs> <laughs> can Rosie dramatically pretend to pass out? <laughs> oh, no, man. <laughs> you can try and convince him. <laughs> okay. I think that Rosie's just terrified that she's not making enough of a scene, and she's like, this isn't a big enough distraction. <laughs> like, I'm not creating a big enough distraction. I've got to do a little more. Um, they do it. Okay, is there a way I can do they do it, but they're now terrified of you, but it not be like they hate me forever. They're just like, gosh, sure. she's capable of some terrible things. Sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, cool. <laughs> I pretend to pass out, and it feels only fair that Professor Longbottom looks at me with fear from now on. It's just uh, the possibility that I may eat a poisonous flower at any moment. Yeah, I think before Olive and Clem leave, you hear this, you hear Professor Longbottom uh, cast a spell. Slugulus Eructo! Am I vomiting slugs yes, and you passing are. out? <laughs> Rosie like passes out, pretends to pass out on the floor, but you see like <laughs> why slug? Why? It's the first why thing you can slugs? think of. Um, <laughs> why is this man a professor? Do the slugs look like flowers? I'm just curious. <laughs> they're just covered. They're covered in the in the poison clippings as uh, Clem and Olive leave the classroom. <laughs> Uh, leave the uh, the greenhouse. <laughs> you um, <laughs> yeah, you hear Rosie puking in the background. <laughs> Please, no more sounds. I'll actually vomit. God, they're such bad acting. Are you serious? <laughs> it's still enough. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> all of you and Clem sneak out uh, <laughs> as Rosie's. Rosie's diversion has worked. I I honestly can't believe we're leaving her in this state. <laughs> All right. I just for the team. Let's go. I think the only reason that Olive keeps going is because she's like. She's already eaten the flower at this point, so might as well make that poison. Worth something, but I I think her jaw is just the entire time that they're moving. Like I don't think she's aware that it's hanging the entire time. I don't think we've spoken because we're just so like we better go talk to Roger and we have nothing to say. <laughs> so, uh, you both make it out. I won't even make you do quick and quiet rolls because this was a great distraction. It was really good. Thanks, Rosie. <laughs> Anytime, pals. <laughs> Please, never again. Taking the whole Zamboni for the team. <laughs> you rush out looking for Roger. Which one of you would like to try to notice something? Um, I would. Can I use my relationship with Roger? Yes. Okay. Are you cool if I do it then? Yeah. I'm gonna take that as a yes. Uh, Clem is in another universe. Clem right said no, thank you. I'm sorry. I. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thirteen. Yay. Okay, thirteen. <laughs> um, is a success. You can ask me two questions. Is there anyone or anything sneaking around? find out. Yes, there is. You can see that Roger is by the 
Um, mm, sorry, let me bring the map over. Mm. Roger is uh, by the bell towers. Okay. Um. Does there seem to be anything dangerous around? I so I think when you head to the bell towers and you see Roger, um, it looks like, uh. Roger is actually let me just check one thing first sorry sorry I have to find something really quickly should have had this open I always forget something this is important nothing else okay now that we know the coast is safely clear uh olive is going to approach roger and just say roger oh hello um do you remember me Hospital wing, the vanished wing, the library, the library again, the greenhouses. Yeah. I think there's a couple more hospital wings in there, actually. Olive. Yeah. Um, right. Um, this is my friend Clementine. Um, you've met her before, I just don't know if you remember her. I think so. Right, um, she's in Gryffindor, like me. Um, we both helped you out last year. I was reading you the books, remember? I come by and read some books to you. We're hoping so. Um, I know it's been a lot for you lately, and I know your memory isn't great. Um, <sighs> I know sometimes it can be a bit upsetting to try and remember things that um, have maybe escaped your grasp, so... If you don't remember, really don't worry about it, okay, Roger? All right. Right. Um, there's been some things happening at Hogwarts this year, and it seems like, um, it seems like there's some individuals who are very invested in um, a, a, a book from the Vanished Wing that I like we helped. I remember you do, Roger. 
Um, and this was a book that we think maybe belonged to you. Um, and it had your handwriting in it, and it had someone else's handwriting as well. Does that sound familiar, Roger? Um, it was a, a, a textbook. David for... asks me about the books all the time. He does, doesn't he? What kind of questions does he ask you? He asks me if I know where the book is. He asks me if anyone else had the book. He asks me if there was any other books from the Vanished Wing. Um, Roger, uh, can I ask you a strange question? Uh, have you heard any growling? Any, um, like, sounds like a hyena? Any strange animal sounds? Make a convince roll, please. Okay. Oh. Ah. Ye. Upon hearing this, Roger looks at you and says, you go away. You, you go away. No. No. Wait. I Roger. don't want to hear it anymore. No. No. Roger starts to fly away. Oh my. <sighs> Through like the wall. To... Huh? Is he already gone? Yes. I have a theory. I have a theory, Olive. What? I think whoever is... I think someone might be trying to get information from Roger, and I think they might be using the Glowakis to do it. And I think that they're using the Glowakis to erase his memory of having talked to them. I think that's what's happening. It doesn't make he sense. And that reaction we just got, it sounded like he didn't want to hear the Glowakis anymore, maybe. We have to help him, Clem. Yeah. We have to find who's doing this. And it's unacceptable. I can't think of many things as, as horrible as what this person is doing. Um... It's the Glowakis. Oh, did did we have any leads on where the um, passageway might be letting out at Hogwarts? Well, so I, I'm wondering, I, it could either be going through the Vanished Wing, or they could have moved the cages out of the Vanished Wing when the classes started. And I, I'm wondering if maybe the proximity of the cages to where you saw them has anything to do with it. The stairs? I I wonder if maybe there's... They only have a certain amount of time or something. Maybe we can backtrack from the stairs. That's a good idea. Let's search um, during lunch, maybe. Yeah, I think we should probably get back to class right now. Let's hurry. Okay. You rejoin class as you see uh, Rosie sort of like half sitting up, puking out these slugs. And uh, Professor Longbottom says, <laughs> Finite incantatum. <laughs> and the Am last slug sort of like <laughs> plops out oh. onto the floor. <laughs> Sorry, one more. 
and mm. Professor Longbottom says, uh, th- th- "That should should do it. I'm I'm sorry, uh, uh, but that should have gotten uh, all all the the, the 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 clippings out." Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I've never uh, vomited slugs before, so that was a cool experience. Why did you eat that? I'm. I think I got the lesson confused. I thought we were testing it to see how we reacted, and um. No, and- it, it, it's purposely. Uh, made so that you uh, t- t- treat the leaves uh, w- with the uh, lavender oil and, and uh-huh. you're supposed to soak it in lavender oh. oil first a- mm. and then you're supposed to uh, heat them to a specific uh, t- temperature oh so so I'm not supposed to treat them by eating them no yeah, I really, you know what? That's all my fault, Professor. I really messed that one up. Uh, yeah, I, my bad. Yeah, I'll pay more attention. It's just things have been real stressful around campus. So I haven't, uh, you know, the old, the old noodle. It's uh, not what it used to be. <laughs> yeah, I won't eat the flour anymore. That's my bad. I'm sorry, Professor. Uh, would you like a cookie? Oh, actually, yeah, no. Uh, there's, I vomited a slug on that cookie. So maybe uh, I'll leave it here. Maybe uh, d- don't eat anything for a, li- a little while. Have some water. I'll consider that. I will. I will. That's great advice. Thank you so much, Professor. Rosie's furiously searching her pockets for something that's not covered in slugs or vomit to eat. Sure. Just roll me a uh, two d six. <laughs> Would this be uh, with her benefit of a plus one for food? Sure. Why not? I'm just going to add a plus one to that. There's a four. That's a, you know, 2d6, not 1d6. Oh, oh. I thought you said 1d6. Yeah. Sorry. I'm typing. So 10. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you, you do find something. Yeah! I find an old uh, breakfast taco. It's like, oh, it's only like a day old. Don't get, it's not, it's okay. It's from the weekend. It's got sausage, an egg, some hash browns. Oh. <laughs> and Rosalina just, as she gets up to walk away, slugs falling off of her robes, she starts eating the breakfast taco. Are you, have you ever met the person? Cause I'm the person that when your stomach hurts, you think I should eat more food to cure my stomach ache. That's Rosie. <laughs> it's still good. Uh, it's delicious. Thank you again. Sorry about that, Professor. My bad. Everyone in class is just staring at Rosie. Like, there's a new experience that all of the Hufflepuffs have, and they're used to you. (laughs) (laughs) They're used to you. It's the meanest. That's worse than bless your little cotton socks. (laughs) So mean. Holy fuck. Oh my god, Wag just dragged Rosalina in, into, into a burning fire! You just eat poison leaves on purpose for distraction! For friendship! <laughs> Surely ride or die. So, uh, Clem and Olive, you have. I'm not even. You don't even have to make a roll. This was some good diverting. <laughs> You sneak back in uh, without a, a notice. <laughs> <laughs> so you okay. uh, you make it back into uh, herbology <laughs> as Rosie just heads back into position as Professor Longbottom is trying to recover the end of the class here, and somehow he gets it together and uh, he tries to have students uh, get the clippings and whatnot. Um, as uh, as the class finishes up. And uh, we have our students returning to the Great Hall for lunch. I was uh, everybody's class. <laughs> oh, it was okay. Um, mm-hmm. The, the spells for detecting and or reversing transfigurations are tricky ones, so we're probably not going to be able to make use of them. Ah. Uh, oh, I, I, um, I learned a charm to slow stuff down, but also I threw up a bunch of slugs, so. 
You yeah, went to the yeah, very, very good distraction. Why is um, we talked to Roger and nice. <gasps> yeah, we talked to Roger and oh, he That's had great. a very, yes, except that he had a very, well, a very strong negative reaction to when I asked about hearing um, growling sounds. And so I have a working theory. Uh, okay, so my theory is that um, whoever is whoever Olive saw and whoever is using the Gloacus um, is trying to get information from Roger and using the Gloacus to erase Roger's memory of him talking to him. And, um, and I think based on his negative reaction to what, when I asked, I think that's what's happening. Yeah, Alex? I have a counter theory or another theory. He, he okay. remembers, he remembers David Ryan and talking to him. Yeah, he does. It's very strange. Right. Uh, so my theory is one, it's less good for our plans on checking for cages. Um, Roger hangs out right near the Vanished Wing. So if the people are coming out from the Vanished Wing because the cages are still there, he would see them a lot of the time. So they would need to keep making them forget that he saw them. It was just the way he reacted was like he knew it was happening and he didn't want it to happen again and he told us to go away I, I think most people would not want to have their memories taken I don't like the idea of it I don't can you imagine if I forgot all of you that would be I can't imagine anything worse yeah, but that's why it's so terrible. important terrible and yeah, that's why so it's so important and Roger to... already lost everything and everyone and he's stuck out here all his lonesome and then there's some stupid American ruining his life I'm gonna Okay, it's not necessarily. I was talking to David. Need to ask a question about does this happen often with things being strange here and stuff? But what if, what if it works differently with ghosts? What if losing their memory is is different than than for a person? Like well, it's what different if, with giants? So why wouldn't it be different with ghosts? Well, he remembers David, right? But David mm -hmm. talks to him a lot. Mm -hmm. So maybe does it work like short term memory? where maybe the Gloacus takes out a bit of memory, but he still remembers the period before that at some point. I don't know if I'm making any sense. Yeah. If David talks to him enough, it could just be that they're friends. Yeah, because here's the thing. Um, David was scared to give Benny scratches. Now, if What? David was scared to give Benny scratches. Who's scared to touch an owl? Yeah, apparently they don't have owls. They have weasels and pigeons. But if he's scared to give Benny... Weasels Benny, are not nice. And pigeons? Right, if, he's scared to, if he's scared to give Benny scratches, then that doesn't seem like the kind of person who's working with dark wizards and dark creatures that erase memories. Like, you know? Like, that's not maybe I the also, same person. I also think that at this point... The level of magic and the level of cruelty doesn't make sense for someone like David Calderon Boot. It's, he I feel seems like, like it's he's got be... something to prove. Hey! Wait! Yeah. Hold on! Wait a second! Uh, what if they're polyjuicing boots also? What if we always see him in the wrong place at the wrong time because they're not just using a polyjuice potion on Clem, they're using a polyjuice potion on Dave Blalderon Boots. Rosie, you're so smart. Really? We could ask him. I feel him. like my brain, I threw it up. I could, I was talking to him about puzzle pieces. So maybe I can ask him. Yeah, say, next hey, time you David, see him. I'm trying to do puzzles with my brain. How many times have we had a conversation? And if he says, one. I think we've had five, at least. You could six. ask him if he remembers seeing us on the bridge. Remember, that was really weird. It was a weird night for him to be on the bridge. Right. Yeah, I'll, I'll Whoever is him doing he... this has yeah. been paying far too much attention to what's happening. Uh, they're clearly some sort of evil mastermind because evil mastermind stalker, evil mastermind he touched evil. My hair. They took our well, hair and they watched hair. us and, and they're uh, impersonating us and they're stealing memory. I, I'm angry now. Yeah, you well, should be. 
We should be. We should be angry. Olive? Albus is walking into the Great Hall, and you can see that he has a newspaper in hand. <gasps> Olive? What were you? Oh, um, perfect timing. Albus? I got the paper. Nice! Any recipes? I am sorry. We got, we got it for something else. I, I didn't look for we didn't. recipes. Oh, sorry. That's my bad. I got excited. You can look through it after, okay, Rosie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but I forgot. I forgot. Um, it's a, can you, t- um, does it have it? He turns to, to like, the, uh, the back of the, the newspaper, and you can see that there's a most wanted witches and wizards. Just take your time, Olive, take a deep breath, and just, we're here. Remember, they might all have bad vibes. I'll see what I can remember. Can I do an I read about that role when I look at it? To see if I can recall any, like, features or, or eliminate silhouettes that don't seem like they would match up, perhaps? Sure. Okay. Could she get a plus one since our, our, my relationship because I was being nice to her and being supportive? I don't think so, because you didn't see the person. <sighs> I tried, okay. Thank you. <laughs> that would have been good because I have a plus two with Alex as well, but... <laughs> okay. Um... Oh. A ten. Okay. I'll, uh, Olive, you can ask me two questions, or uh, no, I'm sorry, three questions from the list. Okay. Um, let me know if this makes sense to to modify. Uh, I, I'm wondering if the question "Where is it from?" would make sense in the sense of like. I'm recognizing where where I know a person from or where they look familiar from. I'm trying to, uh, or I guess, I mean, I guess I could say, who do I know that's related to it? I don't really know which one would work better. So, to save a little time here, okay. you look through the most wanted list. You see flashes in your head of the illuminated face. This tall, wiry looking man. Not muscular, but very sort of skinny, wiry. And um, maybe like 6'3", somewhere around there. And you realize none of these people match this person. After giving up, you turn the paper over and you recognize the person on the front page of the paper. And that's where we're going to end the session today. No! No! Oh my god, no! You are evil. Oh no! You know what emote to use, chat. Fire them in there. (laughs) Oh my god. I'm upset. There we go, Dick. <laughs> I was literally just this week being like, oh my god, everyone giving Gwag such a hard time for his cliffhangers. What do you want to watch? Something that ends nicely? And na- immediately, right now, I'm mad. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted this, Marius. You wanted this. I know, this. I, I did. So, <clears throat> we have some end of session things that we do here on the show to wrap things up. And uh, if you would like to join along with us, you can do so by heading on over to tablestory.tv slash W-A-W, where you can download the system for free. We do a few things to wrap things up in the end of session. First and foremost, we find out if anyone feels like their player character uh, relationships have changed, if they feel that they've grown closer... Uh, with their character to another player character. They can add a plus one to a relationship where it maxes out at a two. So if it rolls over to a three, it resets to zero and they gain an XP. You 
can also do a minus one and gain an XP if you feel like your character has grown further away from another character. Would anybody like to start? I do. I think that Rosalina's gonna give all of her plus one because I think when Rosie started her her dramatic uh, <laughs> flower eating debacle, she looked back and saw Klim stunned, and that was fine with all with Rosalina. She was fine with that, but she saw all of do the like determine like this is it, and acknowledge that she's. Rosie's done something and she's just gonna go along with it. And I think in Rosalina's brain, she's like, we are connected. We have this. She knew it was time. And she was she was worried about me, but not enough. <laughs> to <laughs> stop our mission. Okay. That's so that's, sad, but thank you. It's friendship. It's friendship to know when when to go along with the plot of the of the mission. Very true. Fair. All right. True wing wing lady. Uh, I'm going I'm to throw a little curveball here, and I'm going to actually say I'm going to give my plus one to Maisie because um, even though she's not physically present here, you know, we talked about what everyone was doing in the aftermath of last week's episode, and I think in a way, like the amount of letter writing that they've been doing has been a thing that has brought them closer in a different way. And I think um, being able to like share so much on paper with her has has brought them closer as friends, as Olive has been kind of processing what's happening at Hogwarts. So, um, so plus one to Maisie. We love you, Cola. I'll allow it. I mean, she is a player character. She just sure. wasn't here today. Who's next? I think I'm gonna give my plus one to Clem. Um, last time we had that, so I, I Clem got my negative one because of things I did. But then this time, even though we didn't have the same ideas on some things and the same ideas for plans and stuff, it wasn't awkward or heated. It was, it was like things were normal and she didn't hold anything against me, and that just helped ease some of the anxiety. This is super hard. Uh, I think Rosie is going to get my plus one today uh, because despite the fact that I was absolutely horrified, I can't do anything but respect the, the <laughs> commitment. Respect the commitment to respect our mission. Re- <laughs> yes. So <laughs> I respect the game. Okay, thank you. And now it's time to do our classes school roles, and these directly apply to the um, to the house points. So everyone can go ahead and make a mind roll. Ooh. Wow. Okay. Interesting roles today. Let's start off with the Gryffindors. Olive with a 10 and Clem with a 9 is 15 points for Gryffindor. I will do the last one. And I rolled an 8. 20 points for Gryffindor. Next up, we have Rosie with a 7. is 5 points for Hufflepuff. I'll do the last two. I got a six, which is zero. And a 12 for 10 points. Wow. All right. Puts them up to 185. Alex with a 13. 10 points for Ravenclaw. And I'll do the last two here. Ooh, that's a three. Five points. And a six. That's zero points. Sorry. It's because Barney's not here. Yeah, I'm sorry. 
No big brain plays from Barney. Uh, Lillian gets a five for Slytherin, which is negative five. However, Cornelia uh, gets a 10 points for Slytherin. So that's five and one more roll. That's a two. So that's uh, zero points for Slytherin. Sorry. I think Sorry. it's dice jail for those dice. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I try and switch it up all the time with the dice <laughs> just to try and keep things as balanced as I can. Um, but yeah, that's where we stand. Okay, so first place. This is a pretty close race this year so far, I have to say. I have to say. And I will let people know we are getting close to the end of the school year. We are getting close to the end of the school year, yes. Um, Ravenclaw but we're right on now. week two. <laughs> <laughs> We're two weeks I should into the say school year. I should say we're <laughs> close to the end of the the story for this school year. Okay. Um. Whoops. Uh, Ravenclaw is in first place with 220. Close, close race in that second place slot with Hufflepuff at 185 points. Third place Slytherin at 180, and Gryffindor in last place with 160. Close race this year. Very close. Uh, and last but not least, we're going to do our shout-outs for everybody and your downtime moves. Zagonicus, would you be so kind as to start us off, please? Sure. For my downtime move, I think I'm going to do... Um... I think I'm going to, I'm going to do a job and get some galleons. Yo, just help out a little bit, because I'm, a uh, I'm constantly short on galleons, and I would like to have uh, more for a future. I mean, sure. Well, this is kind of like the the reason that you don't get any bonuses on the job roll is because it's all positive, right? Like you didn't have these galleons yeah, yeah, before, yeah. so yeah. you earn six galleons. That's good. That's not a bad. Six isn't a bad one in this case. It's good. You're getting yeah. money. Um. Cool. That's 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 everything. That's everything for that stuff. Um, for my stuff, you can find it Zgodicus on all the places. You can find my podcast as Godcast on all the podcast places, and uh, yeah, um, you can find me here on Sundays where I will play Epo Tobith and uh, Brad Wodo's Darkfire with a bunch of wonderful people, and finally, the crews are getting back together, and uh, that should be a lot of fun. So make sure you check that out uh, Sunday, the same time this is, but on a Sunday. Thanks. Thank you, buddy. I got Oryx. Okay, for my downtime move, I think I'm going to do social activities this week. Now that Olive is finally in a club, she has no interest in returning to it, apparently. Now that she's finally been accepted, she's done, so... <laughs> cool. Love that. Just another thing to fail <laughs> at. Hi! Um, I'm Nega Oryx, and when I'm not failing any and all roles related to end-of-session moves, uh, you can catch me full-time streaming on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Oryx. Tomorrow I'm going to be doing a custom mechanical keyboard build on stream uh, with Mint Lotica. Uh, who is behind the amazing Magical Girl keycap set. So if you're interested in, in mechanical keyboards or, or anything related to Magical Girls, highly recommend come through uh, and come join the conversation with us. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, thank you for having me. Today was very, very stressful, and I'm very excited for next week. Thank you. Murgles? Hello. Um, I, hmm, this is a good, this is a good question. I'm thinking about starting a demon lord club. <laughs> <laughs> so I would like to, Can I would I, like actually, to. Actually, let me just, yeah. let me, uh, I'm going to whisper you something real quick. <gasps> On Zoom. Oh. How shall I phrase this? Uh, okay. Secrets, 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 secrets. I'm, I'm, I've never felt so nervous. (laughs) 
So I think I'd like to get involved uh, with a club mm -hmm. for Demon Lord. Oh boy. I really want to roll good on this. Oh, I've made a huge mistake. <laughs> <laughs> I made such a huge mistake. It's almost like you have a bad all... stat for this. <laughs> well, I've made an even worse mistake because I was like, oh, she's not sleeping. She hasn't been sleeping. So she's definitely exhausted. I'll just give her the exhaustion. <laughs> so. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, so close. Imagine being rejected for that. I think you, I think it I think what happened is you probably tried to to do this, but you fell asleep. Oh yes, okay. So it doesn't mean that I can't try again next week, right? Of course not. Okay, excellent. You're like I'm um, gonna join that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I can't wait. I'm gonna go to. Um. All right. Hi, like, I'm Murgles. It's like PB huh? when she's like, does anything. <laughs> PB when she's watching scary things. Yes. Yeah. Um, hi, I'm Murgles. I'm an animator and a storyboard artist, and I also stream on Twitch. So you can come over to my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Murgles, to come and see how, um, how animated films get made. I recently made one in 42 hours, and I'm working on my big biggie uh, for the next year. Sorry for punching the microphone. Um, thank you so much for having me. That's it. That's all. Please go follow Margles. She's fantastic. She does amazing, amazing artwork. And she's a fantastic person. And oh, geez. if you oh, haven't you seen now. it, you need to go check out the work that she person. did on her on her animation. Because she did a film in 42 hours. That's a pretty spectacular yeah. feat. And she didn't die. That's even better. Right? I mean, that's... that's Would have been more dramatic if, but... <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Definitely would have been against Sorry. the TOS. Dark. That would have been Dark really... Joke. Yeah. Ooh, <laughs> like Leo trying I'm to get so an Oscar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> posthumous. A posthumous Oscar. Um, but uh, please check Margles out um, because she's a fantastic artist. Um, and last but not least, Luxie. I threw up slugs today. How exciting. Um, I think Rosalina is going to attempt to make another Vitamix potion, which is a first year instant potion. Um, so. And then eventually she's going to have to go back to working because she's slowly running out of money. Um, so she's done it. A 10, <laughs> yes. When you uh, get a 10... Uh, while you're making potions, 10 plus uh, allows you to make a perfecto per potion. You've created the potion, no problem. So this was which potion? The Vitamix potion. Vitamix, yes. I I had one, but I gave it to Olive. Oh, I've had two, actually. I used one at one point to run very quickly to the office, and then I gave my second one, which makes you fart, to Olive. So uh, now I have a new one. Sorry about that, Olive. Um... <laughs> Ooh. I have like a little storage of potions in my cloak now. Like I just imagine she has rows of clinking bottles <laughs> randomly around her cloak. Um, anyways, hi, <laughs> Lexi Games, uh, and I'm a variety streamer on Twitch. I'm here all the time. I play video games here. I don't know if you know that, but that's apparently what most people do on this website. Uh, also, I um, I really take a lot of joy in doing a bunch of um weird stuff when we're playing video games. So recently I've been really excited to give things away to people and just like random people. So we got to give a VR set to a stranger I met playing Phasmophobia, who is now like a really good friend of mine. And I got to give, we, get, we gave a switch to a sweet couple that we found through TikTok. And now with Nega Oryx, by the way, um, I get to go around charity streams this season and uh, help give your charity um, some donations. So if you um, want to be involved, we're working with Tiltify. We get to literally be Santa Claus this season. I'm so excited about it. So but awesome. 
If you're raising money for charity, just make sure you use the hashtags Clause My Cause and Tiltify 2020. And we are all streaming on different dates. So I'm streaming on the 11th and it'll be 5 to 6 p.m. EST. So if you're around that time, there's a chance that I can come by and me and Tiltify can donate some money to the charity of your choice. I just wanted to let y'all know because it's the best season for charity because you can give other people things. Also consider doing Make-A-Wish because they are special to me. Okay, thank you. Love you. Bye. Thank you, Luxie, and and uh, thank thank you to Negs as well for going out of your way to donate to the other charities. That's really nice, um, and uh, I'm sure they're extremely thankful as well. So thank you for being extra special this holiday season because I know that there's a lot of people that need it. Um, that's just a little reminder to throw out there to everyone. Um, a lot of, I think a lot of people get overlooked during the holiday season because tensions sort of run high because there's, everyone's stressed out. Everyone's stressed out. And this year is especially stressed out. So when you are thinking about uh, other people this holiday season, maybe take uh, a little bit of extra time and think about the people that help make things possible. People like delivery drivers that are, in maximum stress mode and they are getting berated from all sides right now um i've known several people that work as as drivers in the past delivery drivers for all the various companies and it's a rough job um you know we see a lot of those kinds of uh videos where they're destroying packages or whatever or you might see those online that's like the super ultra minority of of drivers that are just insane um so don't think they're all like that um they're real people they have jobs remember to say thank you and just try and be a, a, a bit better especially this year because i think everybody needs it you might put a smile on somebody face uh, somebody's face and they might pass it on um i've been your headmaster of doom wax steven thank you so much for joining us today everybody um, please make sure you look underneath the channel as well for the link for Black Lives Matter because they do. And um, just make sure you're being, um, you know, a good person and check out the link. It's a way you can uh, sign petitions. You can educate yourself to be a better person. Go, go check that out. Um, and uh, if you want to see uh, an old man yell at Animal Crossing, uh, you can come on over to my screen, my channel, uh, which is twitch.tv slash waxsteven. Um, where I uh, berate Tom Nook. And it's very much not a PG stream, so be aware of that um, because uh, I, I'm i very mean to him. <laughs> uh, uh, and, uh, yeah, I've, I've uh, tried to lock a villager into a uh, spiky fence jail uh, maybe today. Uh, but thank you, everybody, for watching, and have a wonderful rest of your Tuesday. Um, hopefully we'll see you on Friday for Rhyme of the Frost Maiden, uh, which is the D&D 5e show that I do uh, with a very wonderful cast. And we're having such a good time doing the show. And I think it's a really great show. And I hope you'll you'll join us for that. Um, and uh, that's on uh, Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern. Otherwise, Sunday, we've got uh, Dying Order. So hopefully we'll check you, out, check you out at some point there. Thank you so much. Peace out. Have a wonderful rest of your Tuesday. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye.